Okay. Yeah. Um, good evening. It is June 15th, 2020. Um, it is 7.07 .07 p.m. This is a meeting of the Nahant Conservation Commission. First on the attend agenda is a notice of intent uh, for Nahant Bay eelgrass harvesting for transplantation to Hingham Bay within land under the ocean. Um, the applicant notified me today that they failed to publish the legal ad. Um, also, DEP hasn't issued a file number. They haven't even, I don't know that they've even received the filing yet. I didn't see it online. So uh, we won't be discussing that this evening. We don't have to vote on it or anything because it hasn't officially been noticed yet. And that's a legal ad, is that what yeah. you called it? Yeah, it has to be in the paper, newspaper at least five days in advance mm -hmm. and it was not. Uh, so we'll move on to other business. Review and approval of the May 18th, 2022 meeting notice. Uh, meeting minutes that were graciously taken by Colleen. Thank you for doing that. No worries. <laughs> did everybody have a chance to take a look at them? I did look at them. I didn't. I didn't hear when I submitted them. I didn't hear anything from Diane or from you, so I assumed they were okay. I made a couple little changes. I made some little. Um, oh, good. That's what I was hoping you do. Okay. Sent them back to sent them to you guys. I don't know if everybody had a chance to take a look. Yep. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Does I'll anybody have any? To, I'll move to accept them. Perfect. Thanks, Mark. Is there a second? second? Okay. All in favor? I, we should do a roll call technically. Mark? Aye. Henry? Aye. Colleen? Aye. Eden, did you review them? I did, yes. Okay, then you're allowed to vote. Aye. Tom? Aye. Kristen? Aye. So it passes unanimously. And then Colleen, I will just forward them to the town clerk so you don't have to do anything else. Okay, so you prefer I just send it to you and the Nahant Conservation Commission. Yes, please, email. if you could. Yes. And then yes. once they're approved, I'll send them to Diane. Sounds good. Okay, next up, enforcement fines discussion. Um, last week, we talked about municipal liens and what our options were for enforcement. <clears throat> Excuse me. We cannot place liens um, on properties. Uh, for enforcement, we can just issue fines. Um, we can do it through holding a public meeting to discuss it, and then it's a simple vote to adopt them. Um, we can use the format, a format similar to what the other towns have done, or something more aggressive. Um, it's up to us. I talked to town council about it, and they said that we can do whatever we want. I had one question just based on another property around town. Um, I noticed like this example is non-compliance with an order of conditions. If somebody, the order, the uh, applicant is supposed to file the order of conditions uh, at Essex County Courthouse on the property. If they don't, would that, that would, that would be a violation I don't, as far as non-compliance with an order of conditions because the order of conditions said file it. Yes. <laughs> We can do that um, if we choose to. So we, uh, at this point, we can't yet because we haven't adopted any fines. But if that right. were the situation in the future, we could write a we could write a citation now using the existing citation method. The first one's a warning. And <clears throat> what would compel a homeowner to pay it if it can't be if you can't have a lien against the property? So typically, um, most towns will stop issuing permits to somebody um, until it's paid. So uh, other towns, maybe they wouldn't issue any building permits or I don't know, I guess it's what people really need. Okay, so not just something that comes before us, they couldn't have any permit. That's usually what towns do to kind of strong arm people into paying. Okay, because even parking permits, because I know if you... People yes. can't get their park. They can't get their parking permit if they haven't paid their water bill and stuff. Yeah. Okay. So that's pretty compelling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Parking permit. Yes. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> get them every time. Yeah. Uh, I run into it with a sailing program with you know, some poor instructor's parent didn't pay something. You know? <laughs> the kid can't get the kid car doesn't have a sticker. The kid can't park. It. 
<laughs> yeah. To go to work. So that is an option that we can we can do. Um, and so. I apologize. I wasn't at the last meeting. Did you come up with a idea of what the fines would be and how they might escalate? Did you have uh, in the last packet that I gave, I don't know if you still have it kicking around. Um, I gave a bunch of different town examples. Okay. I don't have that. Sorry. I can email it to you. That'd be great. Um, I thought so Ipswich had some of the strictest um, fines. Yeah, I reviewed Ipswich. it. Ipswich is pretty serious about conservation. Correct. So they're a good model. Mm -hmm. Kristen, would you send that email that to me as well? Yep, absolutely. I'll do it after the meeting. Thank you. So we don't have to do anything right now, but it's something that I think we should think about advancing because the current situation, having to write a citation, the first one being a warning, um, I don't think it's very compelling. And it doesn't, I don't think it escalates fast enough. So do we have to do, you know, start with telling the town that we want to do it first? I mean, somehow notify the town before we spend lots of time, you know, detailing how we want ours to look? Um, I don't think so. I think what I would recommend is we choose a version that we like. Um, I would kind of type up a model based on that. And then um, I would probably provide it to town council to make sure that it's fair and reasonable is something that we could do without pushback. And then if once they signed off on it conceptually, then we would have to have a public hearing to adopt it, just like we did with the regulations for the bylaw. And then um, we could vote on it after that and adopt it. So that's what I would recommend. So, I mean, we can wait another month and everybody can take a look and um, maybe next month we can choose a model that we like. And then I can put something together for town council to take a look at. I think adopting one that's, um, you know, past the muster of a, another a larger town that is thought to be a good model for conservation is probably the best way to go rather than crafting our own where there may be you know, things we haven't thought about that would not stand up to scrutiny. So a lot of the models actually, um, it was the fine schedule, the fee schedule was actually set out in the bylaw itself, which means it was approved by the attorney general. Our, the way ours was written was it could be adopted after the bylaw. So if we pick something that was already approved by the attorney general and just make it our version, then we know it'll pass muster. Um, and it would just be more like procedural getting town council to sign off, get their blessing before we move forward with it. Sounds good. I think that that's, that'd be the easiest for us instead of reinventing the wheel. Yeah. But just to revisit, if we vote on it as a, as a commission, um, is there, are there no, is there no requirement to post it or is people didn't attend the meeting and they didn't see it too bad. We just vote it. And so it'll be a posted meeting. Mm -hmm. um, we'll post it at town hall. We'll post it online. People have the opportunity to attend and provide input. And if they don't, then it will become official. And, and then it would be added to the town website, what, what gets approved. Yeah, it would approved. become like an addendum to our regulations. Yeah, just kind of like our fee schedule. We adopted a fee schedule. We'd adopt an enforcement fee schedule. So we have a fee schedule in place mm -hmm. that just isn't enforced, but the enforcement would be that people would not be able to get their beach stickers. They wouldn't be able to participate in so, that kind of thing. So the fee schedule we have now is for filing fees. So if somebody submits an RDA, they send a check for $55 with it. If they submit a notice of intent, they submit a check for, I wanna say $110. So it kind of mirrors the state fees. So it's just some additional fees that we're collecting. This would be a secondary thing that we didn't issue an enforcement They'd come to us to correct it. Um, they'd have to pay a fee. And if they didn't pay the enforcement fine, then I think that we could have the town um, withhold other permits in order to compel them to pay. 
But right now we don't have any enforcement fines. Correct. Is, is the problem, right, correct. Okay, I just wanna get it straight in terms of the minutes. Yeah. And not that it matters, but where does the money go as it accrues? Assuming someone breaks the rules. So um, ever since we started the bylaw, we have a separate fee for conservation funds. And so all the money we collect goes into that. And so it can be used in the future to pay an agent or it could be used, um, there's a case right now that we may use the money to record an order of conditions that somebody isn't willing to do because they're you know, not doing what they need to do. So we'd probably use that, the money for that, um, that kind of stuff. Or if there was a project that we wanted, you know, I don't know, I don't even know how much is in it, quite frankly, but I think it's a fair, fair amount. It's been collecting over the last couple of years. So I think it's on the order of like $6,000 right now, $5,000, something like that. So it's a fair amount of money that's accrued in there. And it, does, and it does roll over now, thanks to the last year's yep. annual meeting. Yep. And that, at this town meeting, they um, transferred the money that predated creation of the fund. So all the money that was in the general fund um, that we had collected before we created a wetlands account all got transfer transferred over so we didn't lose any of it to the general fund. Good. Good. So yeah, so that's our money that the commission can use as it sees fit. Other Nobody else can use it except us. And so you call it a wetlands account? It's a wetland fee account. Yep. Okay. We could also maybe even if it's accruing and we don't have need for a, a consultant or we don't identify a need, the other possibility is to try to help donate to the Audubon Society for the work they're doing in the thicket, trying to get rid of invasives. Yeah. I mean, I definitely Stuff think like that. We could use it for that. We could use it for trees. We could use it for whatever we think is appropriate signage sure. for you know areas of concern yep uh -huh. education, our own education yep yep we could so i think we should sit on i can find out what the balance is and i think we should sit on it for a little while yeah i was just curious not not looking to spend it just yeah. curious. <laughs> i can find out what the balance is for the next meeting um okay so why don't i'll send it i'll send it re out to everybody again and take a look. And for the next meeting, why don't you guys individually um, identify what town model you like the best? And then we can go from there. So at the next meeting, we can kind of dial into what town we like, what we like about it, if there's any minor modifications we want to make. And then we can, I can have a draft for the next meeting that we can start moving forward. Is that okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so that's it on the agenda. Um, Northeastern is, um, they lost their appeal on the stormwater, I mean, on the pump house from our last, their last filing, they lost their appeal with DEP and it was remanded back to the Conservation Commission. They also dropped their lawsuit for that one. So they are gonna be refiling with us for a seawater pump house in the next month or two. So we'll be seeing that again. Um, there's been some die off of some wetland plants around the, um, the wetland on the Northeastern property. Mark and I went and took a look. It appears as though possibly it's a result of the outfall pipe um, getting clogged and causing um, saltwater backup into, their, into this wetland. So they cleared the outfall pipe by hand and we're hoping that it'll cut down on that. Like we think it was just, um, you know, brackish water intrusion, too high a salt content and it was causing die off of the plants. So we're hoping that that was the solution and that'll stop. And I mean, naturally I was thinking about it after we met. I mean, if they aren't clear, cleaning the out outflow uh, gravel away, allowing the salt water to get out, they are in effect putting the salt water into a freshwater wetland. Yes. I think um, historically they have been more active about it. I think they're gun shy now, <laughs> understandably. Um, and so now they, you know, are asked for permission for things they didn't used to do. I, I didn't ride my bike over to see if they've done it, if they did clear it out Monday. They did. They, they did, did it the next day. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So hopefully, and when you looked in that catch basin, it was full of water salt water because there's just it wasn't getting out fast enough so it's done and um 
hopefully wanna, that's the solution. I saw that area because Christian Bauda called my attention to it. Yep. I walk up there frequently. What where would what would we call that area? Um, I don't know if anybody has maps at their disposal right now. What would that, you know, to to for the purposes of taking the minutes? I mean, it's a freshwater wetland. I would call it the wetland on the site. Yeah. On the is that the south site? It's yeah. the south site, and it's the is it a vernal pool? Is that no. fair to say? No. No. Okay. I would call it the. Um, it's called a bordering vegetated wetland. Is the technical term for it? Okay. BBW. Thank you. So hopefully that solves that. Um, they'll be coming before us in the next month or two. Um, and that's about all that's going on. I, I had somebody uh, you know, got, yeah, got to me yesterday saying they saw a large suspicious, or sort of a suspicious, a large load of gravel uh, dumped on the property, um, the, whatever the corner of the big house they're doing at the it's spring and um, flash, I guess it is. Um, nobody else listening. <laughs> Steve's <laughs> Viviano property. Yep. And I noticed that's one more. There's another uh, case where all the none of the permits identify the fact that it's in a flood zone. Um, and that, that matter for us. I mean, the gravel matters. I don't know. Is it just for the driveway? No, that was the thing. It was kind of going behind the house. All right, then I guess we need to have a chat. What can uh, you identify? Do you know the the the, the number? Yeah, it's one thirty six Flash Road. All right, I'll talk to him because so that whole thing is floodplain. That's okay. Mitchell's. Yeah, Mitchell's yeah. corner. Mitchell's corner. Yeah, I couldn't. Hear him. Connor. <laughs> that didn't. That that's more than a fifty percent. Um, uh, reconstruction, or I don't know what the right term is. Yeah. How come that didn't have to be um, meet new? That is a question for Wayne Wilson. Okay. <laughs> they didn't touch the ground, so it's not our jurisdiction. Wayne should have made them comply with FEMA regulations. I don't know if he did or not. I know that they also converted the garage in the back to another house. House. Notice we can. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I've seen them all. They're all listed on Airbnb. So I don't know. I I don't know. I don't know what Wayne allowed. That's Isn't a question that, for Wayne. That's, you'd have to file, their neighbors would have to file a request for zoning enforcement. I, I don't think that, yeah. Because it's, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to really want to wade into that. But if somebody wants to talk to the town administrator about it, I'm sure he would do it. Um, 138 Wilson already got shut down by the building commissioner <laughs> for violating uh, the demo started on that, Joe Moshe. He already shut them down. They were doing something they weren't supposed to do. Um, 138 Wilson. Yeah. It's one we the, discussed to the brick meeting Zoom ago. The brick um, garage that's right at the road. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. getting it's, torn down. Yeah. And I guess Wayne Wilson already stopped work there. Yeah. Okay. And it was, it was obstructing the uh, right of way. Yeah. There's a lot of right of ways obstructed up there. Yeah. So, one of the parts you weren't here for, it, but one of the um, parts of being allowed to do that is they're going to fix the obstruction so it will no longer be obstructed because he's flipping it. Right. Um, so, yeah. Uh, the only other thing was so, the seagrass one. Just curious. That sounds interesting. Um, I can send you a copy of it. Um, they're going to harvest eelgrass. We have some nice eelgrass beds here that DMF Division of Marine Fisheries frequently comes and harvests and brings it somewhere else to try to transplant. So uh, they often bring it to Hingham um, as a way to reduce wave action. Um, yeah. Velocity coming in and damaging there. So it's a, That's interesting. yeah, they do it a lot. So they're coming, they're getting it from here in Gloucester, I think somewhere else. And it's just naturally occurring. Like we haven't harvested that or tried to grow it here. It just is a great environment for it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's been That's harvested cool. before. It's credited with being one of the main reasons why they were able to clean up Boston Harbor. 
It was yeah. hard for me to peel grass from Nahant. Also, where, when, do they, um, where is it? Where do they take it from? So there's a couple of different places. One is off of Willow Road. I don't know what the name of that. Joey Beach. Curlew. Curlew Beach, but yeah. the kids call it Joey Beach. Mm. And then there's somewhere so off the causeway also that they've harvested from before. Yeah, the amount in their request is relative, is, is small. I mean, I checked with Phil Color Service with the EPA, kind of like their expert on field grass. And uh, his only his he said as long as you know that small amount surely it wouldn't impact our field grass beds. But if you know if they're gonna if the Department of Marine Fisheries gets carried away you know over time they could start to impact if they're if we're if yeah, we become, deplete ours we, you know continue to get ours he was North also Eastern. a little questionable about uh, how how successful it would be down in Hingham, but i think he was going to go look at it the next within the next week it is it is not historically eelgrass is uh known for being difficult to transplant it's they're often unsuccessful um mm -hmm. they've done it before northeastern also collects from that beach for research um so when um, Logan Airport did their one of their runway expansions, they came, they took it from here and brought it to Hingham, and it wasn't very successful. Someone was interesting. Someone was mapping it this morning with a drone, and they're going to come back this week and uh, do side radar or something. I forget the term. Was it the uh, uh, No, it was a graduate student. I, I assume a graduate student. Someone's doing a uh, uh, paper on it. Not Northeastern graduate student. No, no, I should have asked her name. Uh, there were two people there at the Dory Club. Oh. Yeah, they, they come annually and ask if they can um, do it. They asked me. And then they have to get a permit. If it's under a certain number of shoots, they just get a permit from DMF. Um, and th this, would, they were just mapping, not, uh, yeah. But I wonder if that's something that would be useful to put in other places if it's really good for reducing the wave impact and i'm guessing for erosion control yeah. is that the point yeah. yeah like given that we have a great environment for it, i wonder if it would work in other locations around the island yeah uh, so yeah so that's what's going on and there i mean i don't haven't heard anymore i mean there was phil color so i was looking at possibly doing something up by doggy beach but i haven't he kind of was asking us about it six or eight months ago i think you remember Kristen, but yep yeah. I, I can't remember what that was. I don't know. You want uh, yeah. Colorusos off the record um, comments on the record or? No, I'm, I don't no. know. Okay. I think it should, be. <laughs> we'll wait, wait till the it should be when we open the meeting about this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. topic. Okay. Anything else anybody wants to talk about? Um, what's with the appeal for Willow Road? So um, they shouldn't, none of them should be doing what they're doing, what they're doing. Uh, so DEP is going to appeal um, and they're gonna look at that whole section of Willow Road. Is it because the, the, that whole section has been messing around. And white way. Are, they gonna, are they gonna do White Way as well? So White Way is, well, White Way is a separate issue. Um, the problem with that whole section of Willow Road is it's mapped as a wetland and it's floodplain. And they just plowed down an entire wetland. So um, they're going to look at all of them, all the way down to the golf course. Wow. White Way, uh, I got a call from the town administrator that it's for sale for White Way. They haven't recorded their order of conditions. So I think we're going to record it for them. So it's on the deed so that whoever buys it knows that there's something going on there. Um, I reminded him he hasn't responded to me. Um, the other thing is we haven't put in the pipe because we didn't have the money until July 1st. Um, and so we need to work something out with him to report partial payment. If we can't work something out, um, town council mentioned putting a lien on the property to make sure it's paid for. The problem is we came to an agreement thinking that was the golf course's property behind him. It's not, it's our Zillow's property. So I don't even know that we can put in a pipe. So we might have to issue a new enforcement order. Could, I was saying, can we, I mean, he wouldn't like it, but can the pipe go and create a uh, 
a wet area in the back corner of his yard, even if it's inside the fence. That would at least solve the front yard problem. I, I, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, yeah, I don't think the Arzillas would stop a pipe from being put in there. I think the problem is that the Arzillos are also being appealed by DEP right now. So it's not great timing to approach them asking for a favor. Well, so why, I don't understand why DEP got into this. I mean, why did they appeal it? Because we gave permission to alter a wetland and you can't do that. They should have filed a notice of intent. They should have had the wetland flagged. They should have had proper plans. They should have filed a notice of intent for ecological restoration. Them and the neighbors. Technically, we're trying to let them skate by without spending the money, but now they're going to have to. Which White Way property is this? For White Way, the one that put the huge driveway in the front. Okay. Yeah. And caused all the flooding. So now the neighbors have seen that it's for sale and they've been contacting me and they're concerned. Oh, they're selling. Okay. Yeah, it just was listed maybe two weeks ago. Hmm. Can he sell it before this is all resolved? That's why we want to record the order of conditions so it's on the deed, so the, a mortgage company would catch it. Okay. Not, I'm not saying he's trying to be malicious. I'm not saying that at all, but he's also the broker. Yeah. So I just um, want to make sure that whoever buys this understands that there's a pipe there and they're not surprised mm -hmm. um, and it's on the record. I just want to make sure that it's all properly recorded. So we may have to issue a new original order of conditions and pay. And so we would pay out of the wetlands fee account. It's $110 to record it at the registry of deeds. I think we have to because we need to make sure white way is fixed because it's yeah. not fair to that neighborhood. It, right. It's really unfair to all those neighbors. Thank you. Yeah. So if we're not able to do a pipe to our Zillows, which we're gonna have to get permission from, um, then we may have to issue an enforcement order because he can't comply with the order of conditions or amend the order of conditions to come up with a different solution. I don't, I don't really, I don't really know. <laughs> Where would the pipe go? So it was supposed to go out to what we thought was the golf course's property, but as it turns out, I didn't, I didn't realize this. This was, I guess my mistake is a lot of the, there are a number of properties on Willow Road that have long kind of tr triangular shaped properties that come up behind these prop this property. And I just didn't, it's an odd shape for a property. So I didn't, I didn't catch it. Where would the pipe start though? So it'd go? At White Way. So we'd put in a catch okay. basin that would collect mm -hmm. the water and then it would be piped out to what we thought was the golf course, but it's, gotcha. it's a wetland. It's just mm -hmm. not owned by the town. So gotcha. Ultimately, a solution could be compensatory storage on his property. Yeah, yeah. Or removing the driveway or, I mean, we're kind of back to where we started a little yeah. bit on that. Because they could put in a permeable driveway. Is that what you're they, thinking? They could. Well, it's, it's but he never came to us. He just <laughs> do this on his own. Yeah. yeah. He uh, didn't realize he needed a permit from conservation and put in a massive driveway and it caused flooding for the street. It was the fill that he put in that caused the flood. Yeah, that's right. right. Yep. Yeah. That was that was even worse than black topping all that fill. Right. Was that you just yeah. <clears throat> that really is what displaced all the water. Yeah. And Skyler familiar with the area, it's really wet to start even before anything was done. It, gotcha. it Whenever there's a storm, water runs over the seawall on Willow Road and comes into White Way. Gotcha. Um, hard to, if you were on White Way, you'd probably be surprised that salt water ends up there, but it does. Wow. Yeah, they had a major problem before, and now it's been exacerbated significantly. So, so he's, he's supposed to purchase uh, the property next to between Mark and I. Does he know that you guys are the neighbors? <laughs> he knows I am. <laughs> oh, we're the uh, Rebecca yeah. and Michael. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. I have I have one little leverage leverage with him because he has to get an easement, temporary easement 